1993's Doom was initially released on the MS-DOS PC and is a horror, sci-fi and action-based first-person shooter which could be played single-player or multiplayer. It is a 3D game that used 2D sprites and was developed and published by ID Software. Later on it was released on other platforms which included the SNES, the PlayStation in 1995, 3DO in 1996, Sega Saturn in 1997 and many many others. It spawned a number of sequels, remakes and reboots, for example Doom 2, Hell on Earth, Final Doom, Doom 64, Doom 3 and of course the reboots that came out in 2016 simply once again entitled Doom. The music in Doom was composed by Bobby Prince who is also credited for composing the music for the likes of Wolfenstein's 3D and Duke Nukem's 3D and is a mixture of techno and metal. Games that went on to inspire and similar games include of course Wolfenstein's 3D, Quake, Duke Nukem, System Shock, Serious Sam and Half-Life. It even spawned a huge online multiplayer following in the form of Deathmatch and even more interestingly Doom was the game that gave birth to the term Deathmatch being used uh, online. Two player was also possible if you had a modem. The online community for Doom is still popular to this day with the use of mods and also via the website Doom World. It also appeared in other forms such as a comic book, board game and a film that was out in 2005 but we don't talk about that. <laughs> So, in 1992, after the release of Wolfenstein's 3D, the team at ID Software wants to create a new game with a brand new engine. After programmer John Carmack was heavily inspired by the tone and style of the Dungeons & Dragons game, the Evil Dead movies and Aliens, along with co-founders John Romero and Adrian Carmack, who also pitched for a new game with a darker tone, they pursued this vision and development began in November 1992. They came up with a title after hearing the line in the film The Colour of Money which read What's in the case in here? Doom. The team moved to an office building which they named Sweet 666. So during the early stages John Carmack was very clear about the game not having too much of a story or in fact none at all as he wanted to focus solely on the gameplay and the level design and to show off the new engine capabilities. They also wanted a much more brutal and more fast paced game than that of Wolfenstein Co-founder and lead designer Tom Hall created a design document that was entitled The Doom Bible, which contained plots, backstory and designs for the game. It missed its initial release date, which was somewhere around the autumn months. Members of the team actually slept at the office and one of the programmers actually passed out from the intensity of working on the game. But by December, after working flat out, the game was uploaded to the internet for the very first time and so many people had tried to download it at once that it actually crashed the network at Wisconsin University. <laughs> Of course, due to its high levels of violence, gore and satanic imagery, it brought in a lot of controversial attention, which probably actually helped bring it to the level of success it achieved, and was one of the first ever games to have an 18 rating, or rather M for Mature. Yahoo Games have rated it one of the most controversial titles of all time, and was even branded as a mass murderer simulator by critic David Grossman. On a brighter note at IGN, they ranked it at number 2 on their top 100 shooters list. GameSpy reached number 1 of top 50 games of all time, number 3 of 15 most innovative computer games and Games Master gave it 90%. It generally had wide critical acclaim and became so popular that it became a big problem at workplaces as it clogged up computer networks and took up a lot of time of the employees too. In 1995 Doom had an estimate that it would be installed on more computers than the new Windows operating system at the time, being of course Windows 95. Even Bill Gates himself considered hiring ID Software in order to promote Windows 95 as a gaming platform. One of the promotion videos actually has Bill Gates superimposed onto it. Uh, our commitment is to make the tools, to make the platform better and yeah, better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't interrupt me. By 1995, it had been estimated to have been installed on over 10 million computers. That is amazing. So my personal first encounter with Doom would have been on the PS1 in 1995 when I was just 9 years old. Playing Doom for the first time and taking that leap from playing 2D games to playing a 3D game for the first time is just the definition of revolutionary. I will never forget that very first experience of playing Doom for the first time, it was just beyond magical. Pretty much from here I started to become a very serious gamer. Uh, Doom absolutely blew me the fuck away, it was a whole different ball game, a completely new experience, I never wanted to put it down. It was the first game to introduce me to gory, 3D, fast-paced, super-violent, first-person awesomeness. I remember another game at the time as well by the name of Pandemonium, anyone remember that? Which to this date I feel was very underrated. 
I was so impressed by both these games in terms of graphics and gameplay mechanics that at the beginning I would regularly switch back and forth between playing Pandemonium and Doom. But then at some point I pretty much stuck with playing Doom as I realised it was more my kind of game as it was super violent, scary, bloody and just generally more fun I found. But my point is that Doom is one of, if not the biggest landmark for me personally in regards to my history with gaming. It was just so damn exciting the fact that you the player were in full perspective of the main character. That, that alone at the time, that concept was just mind blowing. It made gameplay feel more intense and immersive and gave you a bigger overall assault on the senses. It was just fabulous. Just at the time I just wasn't ready for technology to make this much of a leap. I don't remember there being any hype for the launch of the PS1 and obviously at the time the marketing for it would have been very limited. So when this came out, it was literally just a sudden atomic bomb to the face. Other ways it was so revolutionary wasn't just the graphics themselves, but it was just one of the first games that incorporated that fast paced first person gameplay which is part of what made it so appealing and so addictive to so many players. Also the fact that it was 3D gave it a lot more scope as well as it started rendering game levels more non-linear and the freedom that that provided as well as you could move around large areas and running around corridors to find secret places etc. Obviously this wouldn't be considered open world today but at the time having that transition from playing a 2D game on the Mega Drive to a 3D game on the PlayStation made it seem open world. So let's dive into the game itself. Firstly on a bit of the plot. There are a corporation known as the Union Aerospace Corporation I've started performing teleportation experiments on Mars' two moons, Phobos and Deimos, to provide a gateway between the two. But of course something goes wrong and Deimos completely disappears and evil creatures begin to emerge on Phobos. <laughs> team is then sent in to attempt to clean up the mess but of course they're killed and our main protagonist, Doom Guy, is the last man standing. It's then up to him to take on the onslaught and hordes of demonic foes to ultimately prevent them from attacking Earth. So players take on the role of a space marine who I said would uh, later be known to be simply known as Doom Guy. You blast your way through space stations that are saturated with various demons and possessed and you have to liberate area after area of their moss also collecting key cards and solving puzzles. There were also hazards scattered around like lava, acid and lowering ceilings that would literally turn into jelly. I also loved the image of the bomb that would become more and more bloody the more damage you took. Near death you would literally look like a jam sandwich. Items you pick up included weapons, ammo, orbs that give you a special performance boost, uh, body armor, first aid kits, night vision goggles and radiation suits. So you had a few choices of difficulty before you start the game. The easiest was I'm too young to die, which when played on this difficulty there would be less monsters and more items and players don't take as much damage. Then you had hey not too rough, hurt me plenty which was sort of middle of the road or normal difficulty, uh, ultra violence and nightmare which was basically exactly what it says on the tin, never was I brave enough to even try those, <laughs> those difficulties. Those difficulties meant more monsters, less items, enemies move faster and respawn when they die, I shall pass. So what glorious weaponry did we have? Fists were obviously the best, kapow! So you were able to wield a standard pistol which you start off with and later on in the game could always be used as your sort of backup weapon. Uh, a chainsaw which was a ton of fun, who doesn't love the sound of slicing up demons with a chainsaw. Shotgun which of course was handy close range which you will find yourself in a lot of close range situations. Chain gun which was used if you wanted a bit more of that good old rapid fire. One of the most fun guns to use in the game for sure. The rocket launcher was a popular one I found to use against the bigger enemies like the Kako demons or barons of hell. The plasma rifle was all around good, both rapid and powerful. And of course the one and only BFG. This was particularly useful to use on the bigger demons, they would receive a massive amount of damage or just fun using it to clear a room of smaller enemies. Either way you always felt a certain level of much needed safety when the BFG was about your person. So what enemies did we have lurking around every corridor and corner? So we had the possessed human soldiers known as former humans. They were your basic easy to kill enemies and the tougher versions of them, the former human sergeants. And you have the classic imps that spit fireballs at you. I love the redesign they did for these in the reboot game. Definitely one of the fan faves. Pretty much a couple of shots with a shotgun did the trick on these guys. Demons which were a right pain in the bum, their only strategy seemed to be just to kind of charge directly towards you. Best solution for these, you guessed it, the chainsaw. Spectres and Lost Souls, these were a little tricky because they were so damn small, they really put a test on how good your aiming skills were. The ones I loved to hate were the Kaku Demons, they would attack you with a ball of lightning 
And you really didn't want to get too close to these guys, that's for sure. So next, the Barons of Hell, holy crap, they used to terrify the shit out of me. Real tough bastards and even worse are the cyber demons. Even more tough and even more scary and even harder to kill. Oh, and they have a rocket launcher equipped on their arms, so yeah, they were a joy. Spider demons who were equipped with a chain gun. They are basically a big brain inside a machine. Cool design, but not so cool to fight. Another aspect of Doom that ended up being so popular with fans was the use of mods as well, which I mentioned earlier, which, which again would have been one of the first games I utilised that particular tool. Tim Willits, who later became a lead designer at ID, actually started off as a modder just for a hobby. Mods in general have now become a huge part of gaming culture. It gives you this entire platform of freedom where you can change various aspects of the game, including items, characters, sound and gameplay. People have actually incorporated elements into the game from other pop culture works, such as Simpsons, South Park, Aliens, Sonic and The Terminator. So just to wrap things up, 1993's Doom was obviously very impactful and very influential. No pun intended, it was a true game changer for the genre. This along with Wolfenstein 3D are games in particular that are widely known to have defined the first person shooter and were very important for the genre. And even better is that it is regarded as one of the best games ever created. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified of upcoming content and I'll catch you very soon. Ciao.